guys. Welcome back. Another video. Uh, this time I'm going to talk about uh, how I've got Microsoft Flight Simulator VR set up for my system. I'm using a i7-6700 CPU, a 1080Ti GPU. You can see the specifics in the, in the description. Uh, 32 gig of RAM and SSDs for disk space. I'm using an HP Reverb G2 headset. I want to go over the headset settings and the steps that I've taken to dial this in as best as I can at the moment. I'm sure I'm going to be less learning more lessons as we go along here, but I wanted to get this out to you to, to help those who might be struggling. So thanks to uh, VR Pilot for his assistance and also VR Flight Sim guy. Those, those guys are diligently trying to make this work better for everybody. I appreciate that. Make sure you check out their YouTube channels. So in any event, let's first go over my uh, headset settings. So we'll start with HP Reverb. So we've got high, and resolution is set on best quality. Calibration, uh, that's my IPD, and we're using 90 hertz. Okay, so pretty simple setup there. Steam VR, we've got on the global setting 100%. There's been some controversy over this. Some, some people say it should be set at specifically the resolution per eye of the Reverb 2. I have not seen any posts from Valve saying that there's a bug here. I've seen opinions both ways. I have it at 100% per eye for the baseline setting. And then the per application setting, if you take a look at Microsoft Play Simulator, I have that set at 100% as well. And smoothing enabling. You guys may have different settings. This is how I've got things set up now. And it seems to work for me. So that's what we got. That's how we have Steam VR set up. As far as um, Open XR, make sure you download the current version of this tool, and you'll get this custom rendering scale option. I've been tweaking this. This is I've been tr trying this, and I've gotten it up to this point at to eighty five percent. You may be able to go higher. I may be able to go higher depending on where I'm flying and what I'm flying. But for what you're, what I'm going to show you today, which is basically the DA forty in a heavily forested area, this seems to be working well with the settings that I have. Another very, very important thing to be aware of is there's a great post. So in forums.flightsimulator.com, look for this post, VR Bang for the Buck Performance Guide. This thing is amazing. It goes through every single graphic setting in, in FS2020 and tells you what effect it has on FPS loss. Okay, each one of these settings. So I went through all of these and pushed up the ones that had barely any effect and really kind of scaled back or watched the ones that did. All right, so this is a really critical post. And thanks to the VR Pilot for finding this and posting this in the VR Aviators group. This has been really helpful. So make sure you check that out. So that's that was one of the major references that I used. Before we go over the settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator, the first thing I did was in your Microsoft Flight Simulator folder, okay, under Packages, in the Community folder, you've got all the, you, you potentially have a lot of stuff in here, okay? What I did was I took the Community folder, I copied it out somewhere else, I went in here and I removed all this stuff and deleted it, right? Restarted Microsoft Flight Simulator and then put the stuff back in. And that seemed to help smooth out the frame somewhat. At least I was getting much less frame stuttering when I did that. So make sure you check that out. And that was a critical step. And again, thanks to VR Pilot for his suggestion there. So make sure you take a look at doing that. All right. So once you've got that done, make sure you you bind your VR keys. So in the keyboard here, okay, you need to make sure you've got your camera reset bound, your toolbar toggle bound, and your activate deactivate VR mode bound. All right. So this one's going to allow you to get in the right spot in your seat in the cockpit when you're in VR. This one's going to toggle that toolbar you get on the top so you can change weather and ATC and all that stuff. So you're going to want to have that. And then also you need, especially when you're tweaking, you're going to want to be able to go in and out of VR mode. So you want to set up something to do that as well. This is critical. In fact, when you first start it, when you first try to fly in VR, you're going to, you're, it's basically going to tell you to uh, do a camera reset and... Unfortunately, Asobo didn't assign a key to this, so people try to spacebar. This is like the number one problem I've seen. So you want to, before you do anything, make sure you set this up so that you now have a key bound so you can reset your camera view. All right, so now let's take a look at the settings that I have. In your graphics area, 
you have a PC setting for when you're in 2D like I am sh here right now and you can click this right here and go to your VR settings okay render scaling which has a huge effect on your GPU CPU I've got that at 70 percent some cases I can go to 80 percent if I'm flying area in areas where it's like more water like in the island areas but 70 percent seems for me to be the sweet spot TAAs for anti-aliasing uh, the level of terrain detail I've got that at 130 okay you can tweak this this one seems to not have much effect okay terrain vector data at high buildings trees grass at medium object level at 130 uh, volumetric uh, clouds at low this is a major hit on GPU okay so I got that at low once I get a better GPU we'll jump this up but this isn't that important to me if you have this on high I, I, it's got a major major effect on on your, uh, your resources text resolution at ultra because this doesn't have a lot Anseotropic filtering at 16x because this doesn't have a lot of effect. Texture super sampling 6 by 6. That was a suggestion on um, the, the VR aviators group by someone. This allows you to see the runways much better from a distance. If you have that issue where you're, you're when you're coming into a runway and it looks blurry and you can't see the lines and stuff, pump this up. I've got it at 6 by 6. That seems to be fine, but this is a critical one for visuals for distant visuals. Okay. Texture synthesis medium, water waves medium, shadows at 768. You can, these shadows have a fair amount of uh, resource usage, so you want to be very careful with that. Contact shadows low, windows effects low. Ambient inclusion is a major hit, so I've got that off. Reflections I've got off, another major hit. Light shafts at low, because that's a pretty decent hit. Bloom at off. And cockpit refresh rate at high. This isn't a major hit, according to the Big Bang post. If you have this on low, then you're going to see like jagged movement. And then when you're in the uh, G1000 and you're watching the altitude increase, you're going to see like a jagged movement. If you put this at a high, it, 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 it just functions a lot smoother. And that's much important to me. And then when you go to traffic, okay, you want to go to your VR settings under traffic. Here's how I have things set here aircraft traffic types. Nameplates off. Airport life I've got fairly low. And land and sea traffic fairly low, as you can see here. You can play with these. And I've got these settings here for the AI and multiplayer stuff. So those are the critical features. And again, what I would do is use that Big Bang article, or post I should say, to, especially for the graphics for VR, to tweak this based upon your GPU, CPU setup. I'm doing this for a 1080 Ti. And I'm trying to keep my GPU at about 80%. So when we're flying, we're running around 70-80%. All right. You don't want to get it like 99% if you can help it, because you might come into spikes where you go up to over 100. You might get a frame, some frame jittering and stuff. Now I haven't gotten to this to the point where it's completely smooth, but it's a lot smoother than it was when I started tweaking this this morning. I've been at this for about four hours this morning trying to get to dial this in so make sure you reference that bang for your buck post that's an important thing in fact i'll put a link in the description to that so you can get right to that okay so let's talk about open xr so this is a, the newer version of it make sure you've got the current version it's got this custom render scaling and you can actually play with this to increase or decrease the the resolution and i found between 80 and 85 is the right resolution for me. I'm going to just knock this down to 80 right now because we're in, we're in a pretty heavily forested area. I'm going to go back to my flight here, okay? I'm still in 2D, so we're up in the Poconers near Lake Wallapawpack. So all I have to do now is because I have Control-Alt-V set up to go into VR, just go Control-Alt-V, go into VR. You can hear that sound, and now we're in VR, okay? All right, and you can see it takes a little time for the GPU and CPU to sort of adjust the thing, so you've got to give it a little time to to bellow out here. So now I've got my CPU. Let's see, it's, it'll come down. It's at 100% now while it's getting everything configured, but it should come down to about 50. And you can see I've got GPU starting to get up to around 90, 80, 88, 87, 90. That's okay. I don't have a problem with that, okay? VRAM is really super important. So here we're about 9 gig. I've got 11 gig to play with with the TI, 1080 Ti. CPU is at 53. All right, so these are all fairly good numbers. You want to have this set to graphics 1 to see the true depiction of how your 
graphics card is operating. This over here is your 3D. Graphics one is the critical measurement. So let's just try this. We're going to fly real quickly around here just to give you a, uh, a snapshot and uh, I'll describe what I'm seeing. I have a key bound to my yoke so I can set up my centering and this looks excellent. Okay, very clear. Really good. Okay, all right, let's get, uh, we got our parking brake off flap set. We're going to rev this thing up here. By the way, this uh, DA40NG is a great sightseeing plane because you got this wide windshield. You get, a, you get a great view of everything. Wow, this is awesome. I mean, nice and smooth, pretty smooth. I mean, a, maybe a little bit of frame stuttering. But again, this is a 1080 Ti, okay? You're watching the graphics settings, uh, the graphics results there. It's not bad. All right, so we're going to take off here. This is pretty smooth. It seems to be smoother when you look ahead and when you look to the left or right. That's when things, let me get my flaps up here so I don't uh, stall out this plane. I got to get over the, oh, I got to get over these, uh, I got to get some airspeed here. Flaps are up. All right, here we go. We're starting to get some airspeed now. It's so cool to be able to look over the cockpit, you know. I'm sorry, over the uh, over the dash to be able to see out over the nose in VR. I, I really, when I was flying in 2D for the last four months in FS 2020, it was really frustrating. Now this is awesome. I'm actually really familiar with this area. I've been up here a lot, and this looks so real. <laughs> I mean, it's it's that's what's so astounding about it. The trees... You know, I said before, they did such a great job with the trees. I really think that's what uh, what has what really one of the major thing that makes this. So you could see these are. Pr I'm getting pretty good frame performance here. I'm not worried too much about frame rate. I'm worried more about frame consistency because that's what's going to give you the smoothness. I know a lot of people worry about FPS, but in flight simulation, I'll argue that. Frame consistency is much, much more important. So I would say this is the town of Honesdale, I believe. It looks like Honesdale. And this is a smooth, smooth experience. All right? So just a quick, a take, take a quick look here. So my GPU is at uh, 78, high 70s, low 80s. CPU is running fairly solid. And I've got uh, less than 9 gig on the uh, VRAM. So I'm not overtaxing my resources and I'm getting a nice nice experience pretty smooth again some frame stuttering here and there that could be due to uh, cloud-based graphics or cloud-based scenery as we all know that's how Microsoft uh, is set up but uh, here we are in a pretty well terrained area with a lot of pretty dense forest and it's pretty solid all right so anyway just a quick video to give you an understanding of how I've got things set up after, uh, well, it's been actually more than four. It was four hours today and probably like another four hours yesterday tweaking this. Lessons learned from various folks that are uh, working on uh, getting this thing dialed in. All right? All right, guys. Hope that was helpful. Hit that like button. If you like what you saw, don't forget to subscribe to uh, Bambino Tech for more uh, VR flight simulation. Have a great day, guys. Enjoy the flying.